Throughout this series, we've taken a look at many modern rhythm games that have made an attempt at the market, only to eventually die due to mismanagement, trend chasing, or poor reception. The deaths of these games can almost be seen as common, with a lot of games coming in and out of the market in a short time span. Today, however, we're looking at something different. A founding titan of rhythm games, and one of the origin points of the genre. Rhythm games as a concept didn't exist until around the mid-1990s. Parappa the Rapper, released in 1996, is usually credited as being the first rhythm game to start defining genre concepts, in addition to there being not much before that that could be considered a rhythm game other than maybe, like, dance aerobics on NES or Simon? I don't know. Parappa was basically the first. After that, however, Japanese company Konami would step into the uncharted waters of rhythm gaming to create a genre-defining work that would inspire rhythm games for years to come. This is the history of the origin of rhythm games, Beat Mania. Beat Mania is the first rhythm game ever created by Konami. It was also the start of their Bimani line of games, and is where said term comes from being a shortening of Beat Mania. The gameplay style of Beat Mania is very simple. There are five keys arranged in a three bottom, two top pattern, and a turntable on the right side. The cabinet features two sets of control inputs, and just to get this out of the way right now for all of you Beatmania 2DX players, both control sets have the turntable on the right. Eat your heart out, P1 side players. The gameplay simply involved hitting the scrolling notes as they reached the red line at the bottom of the screen. As we'll discuss later, throughout the series they expanded some complexity of the game by adding judgments and combos, but for the most part, hitting the buttons at the judgment line was, in effect, the entire game. Beat Mania's releases can be roughly broken down into four phases, so we'll be covering the versions in blocks, since a lot of the early Beat Mania releases were… a bit lacking in content. Another quick note, in this video we're only covering the arcade releases of the game. Home versions of Beat Mania are an entirely different story, and there are a lot of them, so we'll save those for another day. With that, let's get started with the very first version of Beat Mania, what would become to be known as First Mix. Beat Mania First Mix, also known at the time as just Beat Mania, was released on December 10th, 1997, and later released in the US as Hip Hop Mania. Now, if you're coming from any sort of modern rhythm game, Beat Mania is nothing short of dire. The original Beat Mania, maybe as expected, has the smallest amount of songs in any Bimani game. Seven. It has seven songs. And there aren't different charts either. You get one for each song. Going back this far into rhythm games, you can see that so few of the standards now existed back then. The game had no combo counter, the song select screen doesn't show the artist or the song name, just a difficulty from 1 to 5 stars and a genre. It's pretty wild. Another weird thing about the first Beat Mania is that other than the lack of content, the game feels rushed. Like very rushed. Maybe that was why there were so few songs, but there were other indicators of rushed development as well. As an example, not one, but two of the game's seven songs have typos in the title. 20 November is written as 20 November, and Emotion is written as E Emotion. This technically means that 28% of Beat Mania's song list has a typo. Another interesting thing is how scuffed some of the background videos are. On screen right now is the video for Jam Jam Reggae, a classic background animation. Even here we can see an instance of some QA most likely just not being present, because in the background of the BGA, we can see the word fuck written right above the old Konami logo. For those unaware, Fuck Konami has sort of become a phrase all Konami fans will use whenever Konami makes an anti-consumer business decision. I even have it written on the back of my e-amusement card. But this means that Fuck Konami is canon and has existed since 1997. As much as this mix was arguably an absolute train wreck, it somehow did well enough to get a sequel just three months later. Beat Mania's second mix was released on March 18th, 1998. From here, we'll start to see some standards both of Beat Mania and also of rhythm games start to drift in. One of the most notable things to start being added to the game is modifiers. Any player of modern rhythm games knows that the modifiers to change how the chart appears, how it plays, and what you can and can't see are very common now. This game most likely laid the foundation for that by introducing the hidden modifier, which makes the notes disappear about halfway down the screen before they reach the strike line. At the time, doubles play was also added as a modifier rather than its own mode, and it would allow you to play the one player and two player charts at the same time. They also raised the difficulty maximum from 5 to 6. 
And thankfully, this time around, there was a bit more QA throughout, and they fixed the emotion and 20 November typos. I think by most definitions, this is where the series started to solidify and begin establishing conventions that would end up making it popular in Japan. This time, with about five months between releases, we head into Third Mix. Beatmania Third Mix was released on September 28th, 1998, the same day as the first version of Pop and Music. In this mix, we got a few more features that would become series staples. The game finally had a combo counter added, and the rules for judgments were a bit more clearly defined, though some of the mechanics were a bit weird compared to today's mechanics. Goods actually break your combo in this game, and Flash and Great was added, but not in the modern sense where it was a tighter judgment or worth more points, just that after 10 combo, your Great Judgment would be a Flash and Great instead. Easy Mode was added, with the closest comparison to modern Beatmania 2DX being Beginner Mode, where you were restricted to less songs than in Normal Mode. This game introduced quite a few more modifiers as well, most notably Random was added, which shuffles all the notes in the chart except for scratches. Random went on to become a series staple modifier, along with being somewhat controversial, so to see such an iconic modifier added to the series over 20 years ago is pretty interesting. We also got the Mirror modifier, which mirrors the notes in the chart except for scratches, and the Battle modifier, which allowed two players to play the same chart against each other, since at this point in the series, the game actually had different charts for 1P and 2P side, which is a little weird considering the control schemes in Beatmania are the same on both sides. As far as I can tell, this was also the point where the Beatmania series would introduce the idea of another charts. Well, today, another is the name of the most difficult chart for any given song. When the concept was originally introduced, they were secret alternative charts that could be played in certain modes or by using unlock codes. For example, in Third Mix, if you had 20 November or attacked the music highlighted on the menu and pressed 1 and 6 at the same time when the timer was at 11 seconds, the Another chart would load instead. As for a bit of history about the staff working on Beatmania, this game was the series debut of Gyo Iguchi, the director of background videos for the Beatmania series. The background animations, or BGA as they're known, are an iconic piece of the style of Beatmania and often capture the style of the era the game was created in very well. This is a position that Iguchi actually still holds to this day, and he was also responsible for designing some of Beatmania's original signature characters like Tran. About half a year later, we would come to the end of the first phase of Beatmania. Beatmania Complete Mix was released on January 19th, 1999. This mix was also released outside of Japan as Hip Hop Mania Complete Mix in the US and Beat Stage Complete Mix in Korea. This is the first time Konami would experiment with a compilation mix as the game features all of the songs from first mix, second mix, third mix, and some new songs as well. The funny thing about Complete Mix is that it doesn't continue feature parody with the previous version. For example, third mix had a combo counter, but Complete Mix doesn't have one. It, however, did have some other new features added. The modern version of Flash and Greats were introduced here with a tighter timing window and bonus score. EX score was also introduced, an alternate scoring indicator, and what would become the competition standard for Beatmania as a series among its community. Also, the game finally shows the song name. With Complete Mix, the first phase of Beatmania comes to an end. Over the course of these two years, Konami was able to establish Beatmania as a series and continued to draw interest in the game. As we head into phase two, we take a step back for a sort of reset to the series' next direction. Released a few months after Complete Mix on April 26, 1999, Beatmania fourth mix, The Beat Goes On, would mark a small series reset. All the existing songs in the game were removed and replaced with a completely fresh new song list. This mix did have some changes that the series would retain, however. This is the first Bamani game that had licensed songs and Bamani crossovers, both things that would become series staples. The difficulty cap was raised up to 7, and 4th Mix is the first version where all songs have at least two charts for both single and double, marking a significant increase in the amount of content. The Good Judgment was also changed to not break your combo anymore, though hilariously this was actually not a permanent change quite yet, and Good Breaks would return later. A few UI changes were implemented, notably the artist is also listed on the song select now as well. Finally, after two years, we have all the song information available on the song select screen. The UI art design changed as well, starting to move toward that late 90s, early 2000s, future-esque design that would go on to become very popular and somewhat define Beatmania's feel. The only other real thing of note that I could find about this mix was the super whack song select code that allowed you to pick any song in any mode. So if you ever wanted to figure out how to enable all songs on the song select in Beatmania 4th mix, here it is. <clears throat> With the buttons, left to right being 1 through 10, on the title screen, press 
six, ten, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, six, seven, six, six, ten, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, six, seven, six, six. Hold two, four, and effect, and press start. Who the hell was gonna do that? About four months later, we arrive at Beatmania 5th Mix, Time to Get Down, released on September 22nd, 1999. Something to keep track of for the future, by the way, is that Beatmania 2DX, Beatmania's sequel series, had its first version released between 4th Mix and 5th Mix. This was the first Bimani game to feature Dance Mania licenses, something that would become common in these earlier Bimani releases in general. Dance Mania is a series of remix compilation albums that started in 1996, and many of the songs from that series would make their way into Bimani games as crossovers. We got more gameplay updates in this version as well. This was finally the last version to not track combo count in all modes, finally making the combo counter a permanent staple of rhythm games in the process. We got more modifiers in this version as well, specifically the sudden modifier, which is the opposite of hidden, where notes appear starting halfway down the screen rather than at the top. For those familiar with Bamani modifiers, stealth didn't exist at this point, so the game actually allowed you to pick both hidden and sudden, which would make the notes entirely invisible. A high speed modifier was also introduced, setting the scroll speed to double. This would be the first time players would be able to adjust the scroll speed of notes, something that would get expanded on in the future. This game also restricted flash and grade again for some reason, being stuck only in expert mode. This is sort of similar to how in DDR for a little while, the marvelous timing window was only available in courses. The last interesting thing to note about 5th Mix was that it actually had a region exclusive mode. The Korean version of the game had an extra feature called Perfect Play. With this mode on, any judgment lower than a good was an instant fail. As far as I know, this is the only time a feature like this has existed in the series, and from what I know, wouldn't return to Bamani in general until Sound Voltex got its goal system, where you were allowed to set it to a specific score, otherwise you'd fail. But even then, it was never based on judgments, unless you go for a PUC. I'd be curious to know if they released this only in Korea to test reception to a mode like that. Finally, we arrive at the end of the second phase of Beatmania, Beatmania Complete Mix 2, released on January 27th, 2000, and also in the US as Hip Hop Mania Complete Mix 2 in June of 2000, though that version had all the licensed music removed. This was the second compilation mix comprised mostly of content from the second phase of Beatmania. It had all the songs from 4th and 5th mix, but also a selection of songs from the older mixes as well, since 4th mix at the time had removed all previous songs. The game added a lot of another charts as well, with some older songs getting new on other charts, and with some of the old hard charts being repurposed to another as well, in addition to all another charts having their own ratings now, which they didn't before. I'd guess around this time Konami was interested in starting to standardize the idea of songs having certain amounts of charts. The maximum difficulty was changed to 9, which was the highest the original Beatmania would ever see, and you can now change chart difficulties by pressing a key rather than entering a code, a change that would remain present through the rest of the entire series. As we've seen, during Phase 2 of Beatmania, they were adding a lot of modifiers to the game to increase variety for the game, and that was no different in Complete Next 2, with even more modifiers added. They added a mod called Center Play, which allowed you to play with the one-player side turntable and the two-player side keys, putting the turntable on the left side instead of the right. This was most likely added due to Beatmania 2DX having the one-player turntable on the left side. They also added a few more high-speed modifiers, allowing for 3x and 4x scrolling speed. Complete Mix 2 marked the end of the second phase of Beatmania, but before we move on to the third and final phase, we have to take a short detour into the weirder side of Beatmania. So let's take a look at some Beatmania spin-offs that came out between the end of the second phase and the start of the third phase. First up is Beatmania Club Mix, which from what I can tell was a pretty bog standard mix in terms of features, not really adding or changing much at all. The only songs kept from Complete Mix 2 were the Konami originals, and the rest were specific to this mix. Another weird thing is the strange lack of feature parody from earlier in the series kind of showed up again here. In Complete Mix 2, which came out before this, all the Another charts had their difficulties rated. In Club Mix, Anothers don't have their difficulties rated, which makes no sense. There's not much else of note in Club Mix for the sake of history purposes, so let's move on. The next game in the list of spin-offs is Beatmania Core Remix. This version is a bit more interesting, as its song list consists mostly of remixes from Beatmania 1st Mix and 2nd Mix, and has some originals as well. It also added a feature that would be retained throughout the entirety of the Beatmania franchise from here on, even to this day, which is the pop-up start menu that allows for changing of modifiers rather than having to use codes. In terms of staff, this would be the last game that Ryo Nagamo worked on as an employee of Konami. 
He was one of the co-creators of Beatmania and is better known as DJ Nagareo, the creator of classic Beatmania tracks like Jam Jam Reggae and 20 November. While it was the last game he worked on as official Konami staff, Konami would continue to commission him for songs for the Beatmania series for quite a while after that. Additionally, Core Remix's opening theme is written by Osama Migitera and was his first contribution to the Beatmania series. Migitera is more well known by his alias Des Ro, who made this song that I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. The last stop on our spin-off investigation comes to Beatmania featuring Dreams Come True. This is a, uh, weird mix. Basically, it's a Beatmania game with a song list comprised entirely of songs by the J-pop band Dreams Come True, and a few remixes of songs from said band. None of the new songs added have on other charts, and there's this very strange mode called Monkey Live Mode, which is just expert course mode, except between songs there's a little segment where you get to scratch to gain meter back. That's all I really have to say about this one. I'm not really sure why this was made, but Konami was sure hell-bent on chasing trends with their music games back in the early 2000s. With our short detour taken care of, we return to mainline Beatmania for what would be the final phase of Beatmania's life. First up in the final phase is Beatmania's sixth mix, the UK Underground Music, released on July 13th, 2001. This would release nearly two years after Complete Mix 2 and took a similar approach that 4th Mix did by scrapping all existing songs and starting completely fresh. Instead, the game had 27 songs, with a majority commissioned from UK artists, making this a sort of themed mix. Popular artist Pink Pong would also make their Beatmania debut in this mix. For some reason, in this version, another charts were called Maniac now? No idea on that one. At this point, they've officially implemented free choice between normal, hard, and maniac, or another, rather than restricting them in certain modes, and they added free mode, a mode in which you're guaranteed your full set of songs, even if you fail, but you get one less song than in normal mode. They made a few stylistic choices as well in this mix, including the ability to select between a few different menu color themes. They also added a mode called Expert Plus, which was just a single course of the 10 hardest songs in the entire game. Now, keep in mind at this point, there are three different versions of Beatmania concurrently running, each with different cabinets and control schemes, something I am sure was putting pressure on Konami's production. Nevertheless, Beatmania continued on. Next up is Beatmania's seventh mix, Keep in Evolution, released on January 31st, 2002. In terms of feature changes and additions, this one was pretty lacking compared to previous mixes, but they did try out a new note type, One Turn Scratches. The idea of this note was when the long turntable note hit, you had to fully spin the turntable once before the note ended. This note type wouldn't end up being retained in the long run of Beatmania, but it was interesting to see it added. Maniac was renamed permanently back to another, and singles and doubles charts are now separately rated in this version rather than always sharing the same rating, something that would carry forward to all future Beatmania titles. In terms of new features, however, that was about it. The feature changes and additions during third phase Beatmania were starting to get sparse, and I wonder with other versions of Beatmania existing at the time, if people could see the writing on the wall with the series coming to an end soon. Whether or not people predicted it, the end of Beatmania was soon to follow. Released on July 26th, 2002, was Beatmania The Final, the last version of the original Beatmania. The series wasn't content without going out with a bang, however, and had the biggest song list of any of the Beatmania series. It revived songs from every version of Beatmania, and they brought some of the old Bimani crossovers back. A lot of the old revived songs even got new charts, too. They were so intent on jamming the final full of songs and content that they actually did things like removing song-unique background animations in favor of generic ones to save memory. They even removed the Miss animation for the same reason. The final would make one more contribution to Bimani history in the way of the stealth mod. Basically, they took the behavior of Hidden plus Sudden from the earlier mixes and changed it so that with those two mods, you could actually still see the notes briefly in the middle. Due to this, they added a new mod, Stealth, which was the functional replacement for making the notes fully invisible. By most definitions, the final was the most complete and definitive version of Beatmania, and would mark the end of the Beatmania series. Now, normally this is the part of the video where I sit back and talk about why the game died. However, I think this time around I want to take a different approach. As some of you are no doubt aware, Beatmania had two sister series, Beatmania 2DX, which is still around today, 20 years later, and Beatmania 3, which had its final version just a month after Beatmania's. 
It would be a bit incomplete to talk about the ending of Beat Mania without discussing Beat Mania 3, and as some of you may have guessed, the next Dead Rhythm games after this will indeed be Beat Mania 3. So in terms of talking about why the game died, we're going to hold on to that for next time. What I want to do instead is this. During my research, I stumbled upon a web archive of the Beat Mania The Final website that Konami used to host. On it, I found a page which was a listing of user comments submitted to Konami about the game. While obviously not super well translated to English using Google Translate, there's a huge page here of comments submitted from users to Konami staff about how Beat Mania affected their life. I'm no veteran of rhythm games. Hell, I was five years old when Beat Mania The Final came out. However, Beat Mania's existence is the reason that I've been involved in this hobby for seven years, where I've met some of my best friends and had some great life experiences like travel and competitions. So to pay my respects for the series that started it all, both for me and for Rhythm Games, I'd like to take a second to read a few of the messages that stood out to me. I'll leave a link to the web archive page in the description. There's a couple pages of these comments if you'd like to go through and read any of them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Nice to meet you, Konami. When I went to Japan last summer, I tried the Beat Mania game for the first time. It was fun to start once, and I ran out of thousands of yen in a day. When I returned to Canada at the end of the summer, I searched around for 2DX and 5-key controllers. I was lucky enough to find a 5-key controller, but I can't find 2DX. If I have time, I'll do 2DX in the arcade instead of doing my homework. Why is the curtain closed for such a popular game? Thank you for everything from us Bimani fans for five years. Beat Mania lives forever in my heart. Please continue to make interesting games. I am grateful to everyone at Konami. Konami Life. I was greatly influenced by Beat Mania in my life. The games I play are all about music games, and the music I listen to has changed. I used to never go to the techno corner. The last such Beat Mania is big news for me. I look forward to the last Beat Mania. It's been a long relationship. After all, the times are advancing and they are constantly changing to new ones. Is Beat Mania finally over? I'm lonely. I thought it would be replaced by 2DX someday, but it's so fast. I wanted it to continue until at least the number of mixes reached two digits, though 2DX would continue. After all, I don't want Beat Mania to disappear. Because Beat Mania has made DDR, Guitar Freaks, Drum Mania, Keyboard Mania, 2DX, and pop and music popular, so I think it's very lonely that Beat Mania, which is the origin of it, disappears. Don't forget your original intention. After all, I think we should not forget the origin. Well, you can't go against the waves of times. I'm lonely. Ah, goodbye, Five Key. I hope it will come back someday, because it's like Beat Mania Remix. Thank you to all the production members of Konami. Thanks for watching. Check out my Twitter and my Twitch. Links are in the description below. You can also check out my Patreon if you want to support my content. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.